May is Africa month, and because cuisine is one of the continent's less well-known treasures, we were delighted when Chef Coco agreed to share some of his kitchen secrets with us. Stand by for a menu that's pan-African with a touch of spice. Burundian-born Coco Reynas is the third generation of his family to don a chef's tunic, and he honors his Epicurean heritage at his Josie restaurant. I am a feeder. There is nothing I can do about it. It is in my blood. I over cater, I will insist you eat more, and I'll always dish up more than you've asked for. <laughs> I am not alone in this habit. It seems to be a truly African tradition. Food as a joyous celebration. Well, in celebrating Africa Day with all the feeders out there, I cannot wait to introduce you to Chef Coco in a one-on-one -on -one private dining experience. The venue reflects Chef Coco's international experience and his deeply rooted love of Africa, which also characterizes his approach to food and cooking. Chef Coco! Hello! What a pleasure to meet you. My pleasure too. I've been dying to come to Epicure. I cannot believe I'm having a one-on-one -on -one with Chef Coco. It's really my pleasure. <laughs> what are we cooking today? Uh, I'm going to be doing three Indian-inspired dishes. You can know how much Africa, African food have been inspired by a lot of overseas communities. So Indian inspire more uh, East Africa, uh, a little bit of North and also Southern Africa. So the two ingredients uh, we have here, we have plantain banana and cassava roots. So I'm going to do what in uh, Uganda and Kenya they call a Rolex. It's uh, a curry rolled in a chapati, that's why they call it Rolex. I'm going to start by uh, putting the cassava in the boiling water. And I'm going to add my plantain banana as well. Let's start now with our curry. Onions. So here we start with the carrots and the pepper, just because they are the ones who takes longer to, to be cooked. I'm going to add a little bit of tomato paste, like a teaspoon, and my curry powder. So now you can start smelling all the aromas of that uh, <laughs> curry powder which is really roasting almost on the on the pan all the onion are now very soft and uh, succulent i'm adding now the baby marrow and what i usually like to do if i have a boiling water with some veggies i will use that boiling water as a stock instead of having an extra yes, stock yes. on the side so in this case i'm going to take a little bit of this boiling water from the cassava I'm going to reduce the heat to as low as possible. I'm going to take the cassava and the plantain and just pour that into the stock. I'm going to add a little bit more water. The colors are so beautiful. Yeah, so I love that uh, green of the baby marrow, the red pepper, yellow from the plantain, bananas, and most importantly, is the whole smell. You can smell how sweet it is. Yeah. I'm going to add a pinch of salt. And I usually use a smoked salt. And of course, a little bit of pepper as well, black pepper. So now the best is to just let the, the whole curry simmer for another maybe five, seven minutes. And then we should be ready to plate. Chef Coco, where did your love of cooking come from? I always say it's really something genetic that happened to me. Because I'm coming from a family with a, where I'm the third generation of professional chef. My grandfather was a chef, my mother was a chef, and I was like born in her professional kitchen. What has inspired your personal style of cooking? I would say it's the beauty of the African ingredient. That I think it's really about time that somebody exploit and, and show the rest of the, the people in South Africa uh, how a plantain banana is, what a cassava is, etc. etc. Yeah. Okay, so now we take the, the chapati or the roti and then we're going to put it in and do the Rolex job, if I can call it that way. And then it's just a matter of 
Yeah. Then I take my yogurt with a little bit of sesame seed oil and some roasted cumin seed to add some extra flavor and uh, garnish the beautiful plate. Now that uh, I've plated everything, I'm going to garnish with dehydrated onion. So here, a little bit of radish, that's just extra color. I have uh, some cassava chips also to go with it, just to add a little bit of color. Here are some microgreens. And then we add a little plantain twill. And voila. This looks magnificent. Thank you very much, thank you. We're going to be doing a fish dish, Mauritian inspired. It's called vaduvan. Vaduvan is really a curry sauce, but made with the coconut milk and cream. I have already made the black rice. It's one of the most beautiful and tasty rice that exists, yet uh, unknown. The way I cook it, I cook, instead of adding salt in the rice, I cook it with tamarind, which also tamarind is very much South India and the influence of the Indian cuisine in this Mauritian dish is so obvious. So let me take you to Mauritius, Yay! but without moving from here. Aww. We're going to start with the vaduvan sauce. Let's start. Onion. Ginger and just like a quarter teaspoon of garlic. And here, when your onions are starting to be uh, white, translucent, that's when you add your curry powder. And you smell that nice spiciness that comes out. Those little bit, cardamom, a little bit, the nutmeg. From here on, you can deglaze first with the coconut milk. See that beautiful turmeric color that's coming out. And now we put the coconut cream to really thicken it. So here, we need to let it simmer. The sauce, uh, the coconut milk to take all those ingredients, all the curry, the garlic, the onion, the ginger, to really infuse and be mixed in the sauce. So while the sauce is simmering, let me work on the sea bass. I'm going to season it with a little bit of salt and some black pepper. Now let's take the fish. Cook it on the skin side first. So the reason I'm cooking it on the skin side first is I really want to have a crispy skin. And then I will cook on the flesh side for like five seconds. I will be finishing the cooking in the oven. So I want also to cook it the skin side up so it can be also crispy from the oven. So while the fish is in the oven for five to seven minutes, let me quickly do my vegetables. I'm going to reheat with some butter, the baby carrots, and also the baby beetroots. And it's beautiful to add also some nice little color. We're also going to be heating the black rice, which is cooked with tamarind. So I'm gonna add some salt and pepper as well. It's a mixed salt and pepper already. Now we can get the fish out of the oven. We take a little cloth. Look how crispy oh, that skin is. You see the skin, how crispy it is? That's what I love about fish. Gorgeous. Yeah. I have a, a round mold. I'm going to mold it in there. I'm going to put the carrot and the beetroot on the plate. So now let's take the fish and put it here. And then we just put a little bit of sauce around. So now we're gonna put some microgreen just to create some extra height for the plate to make it look prettier. 10 out of 10. And bon appetit. How do you describe your culinary aesthetic? This day you eat first with your eyes, okay? This is more a traditional dish where you'll have uh, the fish with the bones still cooking almost like in a curry, like a big stew, and the rice serve on the side. So I try to make sure that it really look as appealing and attractive as possible. So for your favorite part, we're going to Zanzibar. Oh. And uh, we're going to explore the spice route. It's a 
the vermicelli dessert. So the vermicelli are cooked in a syrup infused with cardamom, uh, aniseed, and a little bit of cinnamon. I'm going to add a little bit of raisins, which have been marinated in cinnamon, you can see there. Let's start plating. I'm going to plate the vermicelli in the middle of the plate and always make sure that you remove cardamom pods. You're going to put some little strawberries just to make the plate look beautiful, okay? And also here what I did for decoration, some uh, deep fried vermicelli. And then after I added activated charcoal and ground cardamom, we're going to add some beautiful little edible flowers. Now we're going to add the ice cream and the last little touch with a little twill with the charcoal and cinnamon. And that's a beautiful dessert. And my favorite part of a dessert, I'm really fond of the type of dessert that combine texture, temperature. This one is a hot and cold dessert and it's really one of my favorite desserts on the menu. My favorite part of dessert is eating it. <laughs> bon appétit. This looks tantalizing. Chef Coco, for you, what is the essence of mouth-watering food? It definitely have to be uh, visual, the smell, and also the taste because that's what will make your mouth keep on watering and salivating for the taste. Chef Coco, thank you for the most delicious day. I'm starting with dessert. <laughs> That's heavenly.